how do you make it work behind the scenes? So I know that there are concepts like weekly supervised learning uh, that you've incorporated into your platform to enable this to happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, so when, when people think weekly supervised learning, a lot of the time they think about um, like Python functions that you write. And, and that's like, that, that is true. Like uh, you can think of a labeling function, you know, one of these heuristics as just like a function that returns a possible classification. Um, so it doesn't really matter what it does. Uh, it could be simple, like those keyword matches that I talked about earlier, or it could be much more complex, like a database lookup and, and that sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess to contrast, uh, many of our listeners will be aware of what plain old supervised learning is. So yeah. with supervised uh, learning, you already have all of the labels to work with. So um, with the hot dog, not hot dog example, you've got a thousand images, um, 500 of them are labeled as hot dogs and 500 are labeled as not hot dogs. And then so we can, the supervised learning paradigm of machine learning is to have the input, in this case, the pixels of an image go in one end of the machine learning algorithm, and then its weights adjust over the training process to accurately predict whether those pixels correspond to a hot dog label or a not hot dog label. Um, so that's supervised learning. And, um, you know, that was a kind of the simplest binary case where you have two possible yeah. outcomes, but you can have a bunch of classes. So you could have images of cats, dogs, horses, and cars or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so that's supervised learning. And then, so this weekly supervised learning idea that you just described it instead of, uh, so I guess we're still using the labels downstream for that kind of supervised learning approach that I just outlined. Yep. But instead of having the labels be manually <laughs> labeled by some process, it could be experts, it could be a labeling farm in Bangladesh, um, with a weekly supervised learning approach, you are instead writing functions in the simplest sense to run over the input data that you have and predict a label. Yeah, that, that is exactly right. Um, weekly supervised learning is about using um, programmatic interfaces to produce the supervision um, where strong supervision is just like a human sat down and looked at this thing and made a judgment. Here, you could have several millions of rows. Humans are not going to look at all of them, but they right. will supervise, quote unquote, uh, the creation of those functions that are then used to create those labels. So mm -hmm. that is sort of the idea behind weekly supervised learning. And the reason why it's become so popular recently is because um, oftentimes when you're training like kind of the data hungry model architectures that are in vogue these days, uh, you actually do need quite a lot of data uh, to avoid things like overfitting and, and that sort of thing. Um, and oftentimes to generate that much data, by human means is, is just like, it's hard, it's expensive, it takes time for all the reasons that we talked about earlier. Um, so weekly supervised is very interesting because A, it can speed up your time to value. Um, so you can move quickly from like an idea to an implementation. Mm -hmm. B, um, you have this like explicitly checked in set of sources of, of information, sources of signals, sources of supervision, which can be modified over time. So if people, leave your labeling team that you've brought in-house or whatever, um, they're not taking context with them. That context is right. instilled in the system itself. Um, and kind of the third point is that you're able to output far more data um, at a much cheaper cost basis, even if you're trading off sometimes uh, for a couple points of accuracy, precision, and recall over the entire data set. Um, by providing these models with more data to learn from, they often yield better results, uh, despite right. the fact that your input data has uh, slightly lower accuracy, precision, and recall. And again, like that's, that's sort of in the extreme case. Oftentimes, yeah. we find that uh, you're actually able to meet or exceed the accuracy, precision, and recall that you expected from human labelers. Mm -hmm. uh, because in practice, like you are now able to have the right people in the seats uh, labeling data instead of trying to infuse their subject matter expertise into a bunch of people who are like a lower cost right. of, uh, of, of like lower wage folks, basically, who might not have the context to begin with, but they're learning it. So there's some nuance there, basically.